Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we will talk about nine patch images. We will show you what they are, how to create and modify them, and how to use our nine patch editor to fine tune graphical resources for your theme design projects. You may have heard the term nine patch, nine slice, or nine patch drawable graphic. These are just different names for a kind of stretchable bitmap image file. When you put a nine patch image as a background on an element such as a button, Android can automatically resize the image to fill the empty spaces entirely. This makes it very easy and flexible to design visual elements for themes that you're going to design for Xperia. But first, you need to learn the basics of how nine patch graphic works. Simply put, a nine patch drawable is just a standard PNG image. The only difference is that it has a frame around it, which is one pixel wide. For example, to create an image with a canvas size of 100 by 100 pixels, you simply make an image file which is 102 by 102 pixels. Once this file is created, it must be saved with an extension of .9.png. This extension allows our theme creator software to recognize the file as a 9 patch. Now let's find out what this extra 1 pixel wide frame does to the image. It provides a bit of space enough to include some guidelines for the OS. With these guidelines, you tell the system from which point to which point it should slice the file into separate pieces. Let's take a look at this example. Here you can see two thin black lines, one at the top and one to the left of the image. Using these lines, we can virtually divide the image into nine distinct patches. That's actually where the name comes from. Now let's imagine that we want to use this nine patch image as a background for a big button on the user interface of an app. By drawing these lines, we have already instructed the system on how we want our image to be sliced. So what happens now is that the slices located at the four corners of our image will be transferred to the four corners of the button, but they won't be stretched and their look will remain intact. However, we have also told the system which parts of the image can be stretched horizontally or vertically to fill in the remaining empty areas of the button's background. Therefore, the vertical columns are stretched horizontally and the horizontal columns are stretched vertically, and the area in the middle is stretched in both dimensions. So far, we've only talked about two sides of the data frame, but there are two more, one to the right and the other at the bottom. These sides can be used for indicating the area where the content will be displayed. For example, a piece of text or an icon on a button. In other words, by drawing two more guidelines, we create the so-called content area on our image. But before we continue, let's keep in mind that the pixels we draw for our guides should be completely black with 100% opacity. Also, the rest of the frame must be fully transparent. Otherwise, unwanted pixels in the 9 patch frame with any other color or semi transparent black pixels will cause errors with the 9 patch image. When using our Photoshop templates, you'll notice that we've implemented simple strategies to minimize this risk. As soon as you open a smart object, you'll see a mass layer group for the artwork you want to design and another one prepared for your nine patch frame. This mask prevents unwanted pixels from entering the nine patch frame. And this one provides a one pixel wide area in which you can draw the guides. Also, any solid color used here will turn to 100% black due to our layer style. But don't forget that this layer style can't turn semi-transparent pixels into solid pixels. This basic knowledge and our templates help us understand the mechanism of nine patch graphics. However, sometimes it's not that easy to draw correct guides and have them function perfectly in the user interface. Therefore, we've implemented a really good tool in Theme Creator, which helps adjust the nine patch guides or even draw them from scratch right inside the program. So let's see how the nine patch editor works. For this tutorial, I've decided to use the Toast graphic. Let's begin by opening the respective Photoshop template and double click the dark version. This opens a smart object and as you see, I've designed a complicated looking image with a gradient background and lots of visual elements. 
To make a perfectly functioning 9-patch file with so many details can be quite challenging. So my intention is to get a toast message which looks like this, some sort of old-school glossy object with drop shadows and reflections and so on. Because I still have these default 9-patch guides in my smart object, I know I won't get the effect that I want once this file is imported to my theme. Of course, I can draw 9-patch guides here in Photoshop, and then export my graphical resources, but it will be much more convenient to do this in real time with our 9-patch editor. Let's just export this image and see what happens when we preview it in Theme Creator. So now, I hide these additional layer groups to prevent any unwanted pixels in my 9-patch frames, then open the Save for Web window, and simply choose my project folder as destination and hit Save. Now, I can go to the location where I saved the file and remove all these default graphics which I haven't modified and don't need. This is very important because you don't really want to include these default resources in your theme and make the theme package too big unnecessarily. Therefore, if you don't modify a resource, make sure you don't include it in your theme. Now let's go to our theme project, go to the File menu and choose Scan for Images. This makes the program find recently added graphical resources and link them to my theme. If I open the group that contains the toast resources and find the dark toast background, as we expected, we see that our nine patch is stretched in a totally weird way. We have to modify the nine patch guides to get the result we want. So here is the dark toast background. And as you know, this icon here indicates that I have a file linked to the specific resource compared to those that don't yet have a file linked to them. Anyway, let's open this menu and then choose Edit 9 Patch Slices. This brings up the 9 Patch Editor tool. Here we have a work area where we can modify and adjust our image and a preview area that shows the real-time result of our current settings if the image is stretched horizontally or vertically. Due to the placement of slicing guides, the image will be stretched incorrectly in both directions. To fix this visual defect, I'll have to move the slicing guides to a place that has a neutral background without any other visual details. Well, this cleans up the toast, but it is still far from the look I wanted to create from the beginning. Therefore, I have to slice my image more than nine patches. Well, more patches won't change the name of this type of file, but it will help create complex visual effects. For this example, I would need to add three additional slicing guides to split the image vertically. So every time I press the plus buttons on each side, I add a patch there. And here, I make sure that each patch is one pixel wide, because that would be enough to get a clear horizontal stretchable area that doesn't cover any visual detail. Note that these numbers on the drag handles virtually represent each pixel throughout the width of our canvas. To get closer to our intended visual look, let's add a new horizontal patch to our image and adjust its location. By the way, there are some handy keyboard shortcuts in the 9-patch editor. For example, you can select a slicing guide and move it around with the arrow keys on your keyboard or change the size of the selected slide simply by pressing Ctrl and up and down arrow keys simultaneously. A list of shortcuts will be provided at the end of this video, so let's go back to our design, which is starting to look like what we had in mind. I just click the Apply button to save the changes, then go back to the dynamic UI previews to see how the toast would look on a real device. Well, not bad. But the text label seems misaligned here. And again, the reason is that we never modified the content area of our original template. To do so, I will go back to the 9-patch editor and adjust the location of the content area. I can actually click on these corner buttons to see all the guides and where they overlap on the image. This shows where the content will be placed, and in this case, it's obviously in the wrong place. To have a better live preview, we can enable this setting to add some sample content. Let's move and resize the content area until it's properly aligned.
Now we save our changes again and go back to the interface previews. Everything looks perfect. One last thing to mention is that these nine patch settings that we've just made are not saved inside our PNG file. Instead, Theme Creator is saving them as a metadata in the theme project. This means in case we need to modify the original PNG, we can either re-export from the Photoshop and overwrite the file, or click Edit using External Tool option, Modify, and then save our changes. The program is keeping track of the changes and reloads the new file. But as you see, the nine patch settings are still the same. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.